Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of December. In this episode, I'm going to do a very brief news matchup. We'll take a look at some of the recent events and see how they match up with the stars. Then I'll cover the energy for December. You know, what are some of the big movements in the sky? And then I'll go through every sign's mini report and you can look up from your ascendant your moon sign or your sun sign and you will want to look up your sidereal vedic astrology ascendant sun and moon uh, because we are slightly different to the western system you know yes we use all the same planets we use all the same houses the same signs but we just calculate things you know we're a little bit out we're a bit 23 degrees thereabouts out And I do find that this calculation is far more accurate. Uh, I love the sidereal Vedic system. I find that it matches up all the time. But that's my bias. This is my system that I love to use. But anyway, now let's take a look at the news in brief. So what do we have this month? Well, last month I got quite a few questions from some of you on the monthly asking about the chart of Rishi Sunak. And I did cover that in a breakout astro chat video i'll put the uh, picture of that by my side and there'll be a link below you'll be able to skip ahead to the there are jump links in that video and you'll be able to just watch the bits you want to watch but i did cover his chart in depth in that video so definitely take a look at what i had to say there i talked about his chart uh, being suitable for the role of prime minister and i I did talk about that I, i think and maybe it was a month or two before he got elected so you can definitely take a look at that uh, i wanted to talk about this month when it comes to news matchup definitely wanted to talk about this ftx collapse that is incredible now i have only just been looking at that this afternoon i did not know anything about it until yeah it was just today somehow i don't know something came up on my dashboard and i started looking into it and i was like my goodness this I have to talk about. Lucky I clicked on that link and I just happened to learn about it today because this matches perfectly with the 8th of November total lunar eclipse. We had that massive lunar eclipse and what happened? Well, an entire cryptocurrency exchange went down. You know, that is just crazy. So I had a look at all of that. What I did was I watched, um, it was a cold fusion video about this whole thing and I got to discover a little bit about Sam Bankman Freed so I thought why don't we take a look at his chart and I'll just talk about this very briefly I I wasn't going to at all this is not part of my notes as I'm just cramming this in here now on the spot and when I take a look at his D1 chart I must say for me nothing signaled anything there I had a look at D9 again, I was underwhelmed. When I opened D10, I was pretty amazed. His D10 career chart is showing that he's running the eclipse line uh, in the exact same place as the total lunar eclipse that we've just been through. So I believe the total lunar eclipse was about the 18 degree mark and he's got his Rahu Ketu here exactly sort of, you know, Rahu's about 12 degrees 50 uh here you know so rahu is in aries and and ketu is in libra that was quite significant for me we can see that the eclipse line you know is is almost exact so that was pretty amazing so we have some evidence here in this chart as to what um has happened would i have looked at this and predicted that he would lose however many billions it was. No, I, I don't think I would have. Uh, I think I would have predicted yeah, some kind of major career event. His birth chart is, is very underwhelming. It doesn't indicate anything to me. And another video came up on my dashboard claiming that this guy is a fraud. He, he, this whole thing is uh, a bit of a, a charade, maybe you could say, I'm not sure. Um, but someone has said that this whole thing is a scam and this whole thing is a scam why well they create this incredibly huge disaster so that 
the governments of the world have to step in and regulate because we can't let you know someone who's basically a child playing computer games because I think there was this one part of the cold fusion video where they explained that yeah he was playing this computer game while he was doing a 200 million dollar deal or something like that so I mean it's the stuff of Hollywood and apparently Michael Lewis the great writer of The Big Short and uh, Liar's Poker and all that kind of thing. He is actually writing a film about this guy as we speak. So part of me does wonder, is this whole thing some kind of giant setup for regulatory bodies to come in and make up a whole bunch of rules and take our inside leg measurement and all of that. I don't know, I, I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, it, it's interesting that D10 does show the eclipse line, you know, was active. We can see that there would be some kind of um, massively transformative career event will happen at this time for this young man. But yeah, the birth chart is underwhelming for me. I don't know, it's interesting. So I just thought I'd bring it up because the fact of the matter is we do have, this is an eclipse event. We, we have seen, you know, a giant exchange collapse uh, at the time of the to total lunar eclipse, eclipse I think it, it syncs up. You know, that, that is a, an eclipse event. Because we also do have, I was talking about the fact that when Mars is retrograde in Taurus, finance and how we do finance is going to be under review. So that syncs up perfectly here because we do have now on the 8th, if I just bring this up, on the 8th of November, yeah, I've got that here. Okay, I mean, Mars is still in Gemini, but he's just like a day or two away. He's not far from heading into Taurus there. He's just like a couple of days, right? So this entire period up until about kind of March next year, isn't it? Let me have a look. So Mars will leave Taurus in March next year. Yeah. This chunk of time from now to March, there is a review on how we do money, on finance, on, you know, so this event that has happened, whether it's orchestrated or not, this event is matching up with what's happening in the sky with the stars here. It really is. So yeah, again, I, I will, I'm happy to look at the fact that, yeah, it could all be a scam. I don't know. I'm not totally sure, but it has happened. That's the truth of it. There was a crash that happened on the day of the eclipse, right? Eclipse, something always gets cut out or happens or, and there was a huge amount of money lost. And that's really awful for all the innocent investors and people who had their money there in, in good faith and now they've lost out. That's, that's really bad. And the other thing that we do have that's mashing up with the sky is Taurus in retrograde, uh, Mars in retrograde in Taurus. Okay, we're reviewing money. So, you know, whether it's a scam or not, the events are still matching what's going on in the sky. That's the main thing. Now, the other thing that is heading our way, um, of course, is the recession that people are talking about. This kind of people are talking about a worldwide recession as well. You know, it's it's not just going to be the United Kingdom. They're talking about you know parts of the world are going to be heading into recession. Uh, this does match up with the sky as well. We've got Saturn about to enter into Aquarius. So where have we had Saturn over the last two, three years? Well, since Jan, Feb 2020, we had Saturn move into Capricorn. And that was really testing leadership. It was testing our leaders. And for a lot of leaders, they thought, well, the solution to any problem we have is more control. Let's control everybody more. Let's shut things down. Let's lock things, lock everyone up and whatever it was, right? So that's what people did. It was all about the leadership. The focus was on leaders for three years. Now we're going to have Saturn move into Aquarius. This is 19th January onwards. And the focus is on the people. And one of the things I've been saying here is that the people are going to rebel. Okay, so Aquarius is rebellion. It's, you know, because in Capricorn we had too many rules. 
And Aquarius is about let's get rid of some of these rules, right? So that is one of the things that Aquarius is about. But if we look at what's happening in the world, we do have the world, say, for example, heading into recession. So this is Saturn bringing all his Saturnian stuff. It's not about leaders now, it's about people. So he's bringing restriction to people. He's bringing, uh, yeah, austerity to people. You know, and, and, and sometimes I tend to think where Saturn goes, he can be a bit cold. You know, this is not a warm energy. This is not, you know, this is, we're, this is the opposite of the sun. We're, we're here in Aquarius. This is where it's cold. So it's like the world could feel a bit cold and a bit dry and a bit, you know, um, sad even. Uh, it's possible. But it's not all bad. And I'm going to talk about that in a breakout video. We're going to take a look at Saturn in Aquarius. I will do a special video on that possibly this month. I hope I get time this month. I really want to do it this month. I also want to do a video about Mercury retrograde. We are going to have a Mercury retrograde towards the end of this month. And I have not covered that in the mini reports. So I'll do a special breakout video for that as well. I should have some time to do that because I'm going to shut down readings uh, from the 23rd of December to 4th January. I will be around, but I hopefully I'm making videos or something. I don't know, but I won't be doing any readings at that time. Taking a little bit of a break. Um, yeah, and that leads us nicely to the energy for December because I've got the note here, great month to rest and unwind. We do need to change the pace a little bit this month, if we can. Okay, so for some of you this month, some of you have got great work and career stars. Some of you are going to be busy. There's going to be a lot going on. But generally across the board, we've got Saturn covering old ground at the moment. He's going forward now and he's covering ground that he's already been over. So if you're feeling a bit bored, a bit tired, a bit unmotivated, a bit out of energy, you know, and that total lunar eclipse was huge. It did, uh, especially, you know, for sensitive people, light workers, any of this, it was intense energy that a lot of people felt that. And I saw a video by Mark Bayerski, I think it's pronounced Bayerski, and he had the title, Why Are a Lot of Light Workers Not Feeling Well Right Now? So that was really interesting. And I've been watching some other vloggers as well, and they've been talking about how, well, a couple of vloggers that I watch who they're not even, they're not light workers, they're none of that, they're just regular people. They were saying that for the last two months, their energy has been really down. So if you've been feeling any of that, just know it's perfectly okay. We're closing off what has been perhaps one of the most intense Saturn transits in the last, I don't know, couple of decades. I mean, this has just been, yeah, at least. I mean, maybe when have we had such an intense uh, transit, you know, that began Jan, Feb 2020? Pluto as well came into Capricorn. This has been so intense and we're, we're about to close it out. Okay, so that's the good news. This is coming to a close. We are going to have new energy when Saturn goes into Aquarius. And, you know, there, there will be some good elements to the shift. I do think there's going to be more energy. I do think there's going to be more freedom coming in. It might be gradual. It might take time, but it's going to come in. Okay, so I do believe that we've got a lot of good changes coming our way. So we want to be well rested and we want to be able to make the most of what's coming. You kind of want to be ready for um, 18th Jan. Okay, if you can slow the pace until then, the new energy is going to start 18th Jan. You want to be ready for that. But we'll talk more about that when I do the video. I'm going to do a Saturn in Aquarius video. I'm excited to do that one. I think I've already done one on the channel before, but I'll do another one because we've got a lot of new people who are here. So welcome, by the way, to all the new subscribers. Okay, let's take a look at the energy for December. So as I said, it's a good time to rest and unwind. Not the most ideal time to start anything new, but if you have to or you have the energy for it, definitely do that. Don't let anything stop you. Uh, especially not the planets. Now let's have a look here. Um, Mars retrograding in Taurus. 
I've got the note here, this is a good month to review your physical health exercise diet. Um, any one of you out there, if, you're, if you suffer from chronic back pain or um, chronic headaches or any of that, I have seen, I've been reading at the moment, an incredible book um, by Dr. Sano. I'll put the details by my side and I'll put a link as well below. It's not a monetized link, but it's just a link to this book because I'm reading it and I'm finding it so helpful. And I just want to share what I'm discovering. It's called Healing Back Pain. And just on reading this book, people are healing their back pain once and for all. And I'm really into the mind-body connection, you know, psychosomatic illnesses, people like Louise Hay, people like Dr. David Hawkins, uh, even Lester Levinson talks about this kind of thing. There are lots of teachers who talk about this, but I must say this book is particularly outstanding. And yeah, if anybody is interested in that, click on that and just take a look um, and see how you go with that. This is a really good month to be reading a book like that. All right, now what else do we have? We've got Jupiter in Pisces. We've got inner planets moving through Sagittarius. So this is a really good time to learn new things, definitely. Uh, we've got Sagittarius here. People are going to be seeking the truth, um, seeking their truth, you know, as well. Jupiter in Pisces, right? Uh, great time to learn new things. Also a great month to take your power back. And that is what I'm going to be focusing on in the mini readings. One of you on my tarot videos, uh, you wrote a beautiful comment and you said, could you tell us what you mean by taking your power back? And you said, you always talk about that, but what exactly do you mean? What I mean by this is that when we are growing up, because you see, we've got ninth house Sagittarius, the father, this is the rule of the father. This is you know, the opinion of the father, right? So we look up to father figures. We look up to, and society as well, the people, the leaders, the people who run our society, who set trends and, you know, tell us what's cool and all that kind of thing. We, we grow up with all these voices telling us who we should be, how we should think, um, you know, what's the proper way. And when I say things like take your power back, what I'm saying there is question, uh, question your own mind, question your own beliefs, question why you do things, question, am I doing this to impress someone else? Am I doing this because I think it's going to get me approval from someone else or somewhere else? Question everything. And in the questioning, you'll discover how much you've been living perhaps for someone else and how much you've been living for yourself, you know, and you can take that power back by figuring out what is your opinion and how do you want to live and what are you all about and what's your creativity and, you know, how can you shine your light more because we're here at Sagittarius ninth house fire. This is your inner leadership. This is your inner spark. How do you share that more with the world and when you take your power back you you are going to increase your energy you'll have more energy to be creative and um you know do the things that you want so that's what i mean by taking your power back such a good question so i'll try and put it up on the screen if i can find it but yeah i've got the note here let's see what did i write uh previously taking power back is referring more to yourself for your own approval and opinion, yeah. Then referring to parents, friends, society, absolutely. So that's what I mean by that. And that is going to be the focus of this month's mini readings. So anyone who is keen to go through the entire zodiac, why don't we do that together? We are now going to welcome Aries. Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Aries Ascendant, Aries Moon, Aries Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So what do we have coming up this month? Well, on the 7th or 8th of December, we have got a full moon in Taurus, Rohini Nakshatra. We've got Mars here as well. We've got a retrograde Mars, quite tightly conjunct the moon. I'm pretty sure I've got that right. And this is all happening in your second house. So because we've got Mars here, we've got this strong desire energy present. Okay, and you will feel 
a lot of desire. Now it's happening in your second house. You might feel desire energy regarding family or certain family members, uh, wealth. So your big wealth, your big savings. You might also have this tremendous desire to buy things. Okay, this could be to do with stuff. This could be to do with stuff that you really want to buy. And of course, we've got Christmas coming, so that would make perfect sense. So just take care there. Uh, you know, don't go overboard with the spending. But you know, observe that. You might, you know, might have strong desire to really, to really buy stuff. Uh, there's also a holding on energy present as well because we've got Mars here as well. So you might find yourself holding on to things regarding family ties or patterns, uh, patterns within your family, or there might be something that you're holding on to. Could also be regarding wealth as well. So there are two strong energies present here um, on the full moon, desire energy and holding on energy. Okay, now if we take a look at the movement of Venus, Mercury and Sun, the fast moving inner planets, we're going to have them going through Sagittarius, your ninth house. Now Venus and Mercury will be there, ninth house, all month. And then we've got the Sun joining them, 17th December onwards. So the area in your life that's going to be in focus is your personal sense of authority. This is going to be about you taking your power back, quite literally, right? I talked about that in the introduction earlier, if you heard me there. Uh, but this is about taking your power back and being the authority of your own life more and more. Now, we do have Christmas coming up and, you know, 17th December onwards, the sun is going to be, you know, here in the ninth house. So there could be some arguments with your father. OK, I just want to bring that up or with a father or with someone who's a father figure in your life or with authority, you know, um, could be could be a run in with, I don't know, maybe a policeman if you're caught speeding. I don't know. But the thing is, we've got this energy here of, uh, you know, there can be clashes sometimes when sun is in ninth house can be a clash with authority there. So this could be the kind of thing where, you know, you're wanting to have Christmas at your place, but there's an older male figure who is like, well, no, you have to come to my place and that kind of thing, right? This kind of thing can happen. So just take care of that. But uh, the, the advice here would be, how are you able to take your power back? You've got great energy in the sky to be your independent self and, you know, um, express more of your inner authority. And, you know, you can always express it, and then compromise. Sometimes we have to do things in baby steps, but yeah, that's that's fine. All right, now let's take a look. 23rd of December, new moon, Sagittarius, Mula Nakshatra, happening in your ninth house. So this is really great for, now we've got a new moon here, so you can really wish for something, you know, that, that you want. And you can wish for an excellent foundation for your new project, or creativity okay if there's a project that you want to do if there's something you want to start or create or invent wish for an excellent foundation for that new project okay because we've got Mula Nakshatra here Mula Nakshatra is roots it's our foundations wish for an excellent foundation for that new thing that you're creating in your life and if you're not creating anything at the moment or maybe it's a project that you want to start next year when you've got the energy, right? You can wish for the excellent foundation now. You can also wish for um, an excellent foundation of leadership skills, okay? To skill up or to have more inner authority, you know, to be more confident, to be more in charge of your own life. So Aries, this is looking like a pretty good month for you. Uh, if you're able to rest, and a mind, please do that. I'm also asking all signs to do that this time because, yeah, we are coming to the end of a big, big Saturn transit, and this is a really good time to unwind, change the pace, and enjoy a little bit of time out. So, Aries, take care. Thank you so much for joining, and we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So, now this is Taurus Ascendant. Taurus moon, Taurus sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. All right, now this month we've got a full moon, this beautiful December full moon this is happening on the 7th or 8th of December in Taurus Rohini Nakshatra. We're going to have a retrograde Mars as part of this full moon. 
and this is happening in your first house. So there will be quite a lot of desire energy and there will be some holding on. There will be both of these dynamics at play. So you'll feel perhaps some desire energy regarding your health, regarding getting in shape, regarding just really feeling good in your physical body. Okay, and if you didn't watch my introduction, um, this is particularly good for you. If any of you suffer from chronic back pain, chronic headaches, any of that, um, do take a look at a book called Healing Back Pain. It's by Dr. Sano. I'll put the link in the description below. Check it out, see if it speaks to you. Um, this could be a good month to read something like that, but you're gonna have some desire energy to improve your physical health, improve your physical body, okay? Um, there's also a holding on energy. And this is a good time for you to look at where are you holding on in life? What are you holding on to, you know? And what is it time to let go of? And this could be, uh, this could be all kinds of things, but sometimes it's certain memories, certain friendships, certain ways that we do things. You know, at this full moon, you might be able to see what you're holding on to, okay? Uh, now, we've got the inner planets, Venus, Mercury and Sun, they are going to be transiting Sagittarius. And for you, that's your eighth house. Now, the Sun will join Venus and Mercury. They will be there the whole month, but the Sun will join these two planets from the 17th December onwards. And this is a time for you to take a look at the balance of dependence and independence in your family or in your marriage. Okay, this is a really good time just to get, get an understanding of that. This is no more than observation, being aware, looking at all of this. Um, just see what that's like because in our lives, we all do need family, you know, that's important. We, we all need people. And even I, I've lived alone for many years in my life and, and family for me, when I've lived many years by myself, family has been, you know, people like, uh, my neighbors and you know the, um, the people who manage the building where I live and um, you know the people at the shops and my, the people at the cafe regular people that sometimes I'd say hi to they were my family you know so, so I understand family is a big broad word not everyone has family right um, but you can be looking at where are you dependent on people where you're independent you know, this or, or with the movement of these planets in this area in your life, you will, that will be just highlighted. That will be in focus at this time. I've got the note here, creative solutions are possible regarding any family issues. Okay, because you've got Venus and Mercury here. They're the creative powerhouse, you know, so you can use these two creatively if you have any family issues at this time. Uh, the sun, of course, will be bringing light to, you know, the dynamics within your family regarding dependence and independence. You will just be able to learn about that and observe that at this time. Sometimes just observing something and becoming deeply aware of it is enough to heal it forever. Okay, so just be aware. Now, on the 23rd of December, we have a new moon in Sagittarius, Mula Nakshatra, this is happening in your eighth house. So you can wish for improvements to your family's foundations or improvements to your finances. Okay, it's a great time when there's a new moon, you can wish for a brand new thing. And because this is happening in the eighth house of family, extended family, you can wish for some healing regarding your family. It all up, it's looking like a really good month for you, Taurus. I'm liking the look of definitely Venus and Mercury in your eighth house. That is really lovely. That is really nice energy for your relationship if you are married. So it should be a really nice time. But ultimately, I'm going to wish you well. I'm going to wish you a really nice, relaxing end to the year that you'll be able to unwind and rest truly. So thank you so much for joining Taurus. And we are now going to welcome... Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon, Gemini Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So what do we have this month? Well, at the start of the month, 
we've got a big beautiful full moon in Taurus Rohini Nakshatra that's happening on the 7th or 8th of December depending on where you are. Now we've got a retrograde Mars involved here as well and this is happening in your 12th house. So there's going to be a couple of really big energies at play. The first one is desire energy. You're going to desire something strongly and you're going to be able to see with all this full moonlight, you're going to be see what you've been holding on to. Okay, so what's the desire energy? Well, it's your 12th house. You might see what you've been desiring. Now you could be desiring escapism. <laughs> you might desire getting away from it all. Uh, you might desire more spiritual growth. You might desire, you know, uh, that you want to grow, enhance your intuition, or you want to Im improve your dream state, that your dream state, you know, be enormously helpful to you, that it provides you answers that you can use in your waking hours and things like that. Uh, you might also desire, you know, something simple like procrastinating. <laughs> you might just want to, you know, you might just not be feeling very, um, like, you know, like working too much or any of that. I can see that here too. <clears throat> now, holding on energy. You could see what you've been holding on to. And this could be what, what you see that you're holding on to. These could be the things that are blocking you from growing. Okay. So, and that's 12th house type things. I mean, you might be able to see certain patterns or dynamics, uh, things that you do that prevent you from growing. You might be able to see those at this time. Now we've got the inner planets moving through Sagittarius. So we've got Venus, Mercury and Sun all moving through Sagittarius in your seventh house. Now the Sun will join Venus and Mercury from the 17th of December onwards. Okay. <clears throat> now what I'm seeing here is that this is not the best time for love and romance. Um, but you will be feeling very creative, okay? So you've got beautiful creative energy, but it's just not ideal if you're in a relationship or any of that. <clears throat> so interesting, my voice is completely vanishing at this time. Do you know, I might draw a little card. I'm just going to get one from here. I have had to stop and start this video quite a couple of times. I'll get a little oracle card and just see <clears throat> what this is about because... For some reason my voice is quite blocked up. This doesn't always happen. This hasn't happened for a very long time actually. So I don't know what this is. I've had to stop and start this video two, three times. Let's see Gemini, what's going on? Okay, there are two cards. Mala, breathe deeply and chant to awaken your soul. Ooh, we've got three. Om Shanti, calling forth cosmic peace. Shakti. Feel the fire burn within. This is amazing because I should show you what the card is. This is from uh, a beautiful deck. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like this is the card. This is someone. Someone needs to feel the fire burn within because we're talking here about. I'll just make sure. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Uh, we are talking about all these plants moving through Sagittarius, and my voice is. Mm, blocked and this is something about people someone using it's like from the feminine side I think that's what this is it's like someone's not speaking up <clears throat> in relationships what the note here you will be feeling creative though sun joins be careful there could be power struggles in relationship with marriage partner oh okay yes this is quite true yeah we're in the seventh house here okay Right, and my voice is improving. Okay, so somebody needs to speak up in their partnership. And this is to do with the feminine energy. It's the feminine that needs to be heard at this time or to speak up, something like that. Let me know in the comments below if any of this is resonating. But I have had to stop start this part of the video four times and I like just, ugh, I've been coughing and it's just, I don't know. But I'm feeling better now. So I don't know what that is. Sometimes that's a throat chakra thing. So somebody needs to speak up, all right? Uh, <clears throat> we've got a, a new moon happening on the 23rd of December. This is in Sagittarius Mula Nakshatra as well in your seventh house. So you can wish for any root issues or root problems that might be happening in your marriage or your significant partnership. You can wish for that to be transformed or renewed totally. And it's so interesting, I don't know if you heard, my heater just made this conking out noise. 
That is fascinating. There's definitely something going on in this group, Gemini, regarding speaking of in your love relationship. So see how you go with that. I'm wishing you well, Gemini. I'm wishing you, I'm wishing you, if you need courage to speak up, I'm wishing you that. <clears throat> I'm wishing you the words to say that they just come, you know, and just be you. Just be you and the words will always flow. So thank you so much for stopping by Gemini. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Sun, Cancer Moon. You can look up whichever one you like as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now on the 7th or 8th of December, we've got a full moon in Taurus Rohini Nakshatra. There's going to be a retrograde Mars here as well, so it's powerful. And this is happening in your 11th house. So there's going to be a couple of energies at play. We're going to have some desire energy come up here on this full moon. And you're also going to be able to see what you've been holding on to. So your desire energy might be regarding your friendships, uh, your network circle, possibly to do with work. Um, could be some desire energy even regarding your older siblings. You know, maybe you wish that you guys are closer or there was more understanding or, um, you know, some healing. You, you might wish for some healing or something to take place in relationship with an older sibling as well. You might be able to see at this time what you've been holding on to. So you might be able to see what has been blocking, you know, relationships. Uh, from flourishing, especially regarding your friendships, your siblings, uh, network circle, you know, soul tribe type people, the people that you've wished for. You might be able to see what you've been holding on to that's preventing the right people from coming in. Okay, so that might become clear to you at this time. Now we've got planets transiting through Sagittarius. Uh, the inner planets are transiting through Sagittarius. And that's Venus, Mercury, they're going to be there all month. And then we're going to have the Sun joining them 17th December onwards. And this is all happening in your sixth house. So love and romance might cool down for a couple of months, okay? This is not really a time for romance or, um, you know, if you're in a relationship, it'll just carry on as usual, you know. Uh, but uh, there could be some arguments, I will say that. <clears throat> there could be arguments in, in your relationship at this time. So just be careful if you are in a committed relationship or, you're on, or you are in a partnership. So for the next couple of months, love is just not the best. But your sun is really powerful from the 17th December onwards. Sun is terrific here. So this is great energy for work. This is great energy for taking the lead at work or, you know, taking charge of something or, you know, being creative at work. You've got really good stars to be creative at work. So yeah, if that side of your life is going great, put your energy there and don't worry too much about relationship for, for this month or next month. It, you'll have really good stars coming later. Uh, now on the 23rd of December, we've got a new moon happening in Sagittarius, Mula Nakshatra in your sixth house. So at this time, you can wish for any root issues or problems at your work to be resolved totally. Okay, uh, so if there's anything at work that's going on that you just, it, it just doesn't feel right. And you know at the root, there's something deep. There's something, you know, deep and hidden possibly. You can wish for that whole thing to be renewed, resolved, cleared, cleaned, you know, um, wish for that. I've got the note here that you could also wish to be strengthened regarding how you compete in life or at work. So you can wish that you yourself um, become stronger or more able to compete or, you know, uh, more able to overcome obstacles and challenges, right? So you could wish for the strength to overcome uh, at this time on the 23rd of December. But Cancer, you know, aside from a couple of all these little things that are happening, this is looking like some really nice energy for you. And especially around that full moon, I mean, that could be 
quite a bit social for you there at that time, 7th, 8th December. Maybe that can manifest in that way. But I'm going to wish you well and I'm going to wish you a really relaxing end to the year. I hope that you're able to take time out and unwind <clears throat> and truly relax uh, as you head into the new year. You know, we've come to the end of a really challenging Saturn transit and it's going to be good for everyone to take a bit of time out. Thank you so much for stopping by. We are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now on the 7th or 8th of December, there's a full moon in Taurus Rohini Nakshatra. This is happening in your 10th house. So we're going to have a couple of strong energies present here. We're going to have desire energy present regarding your career. You might get some ideas for what you would like to do going forward career-wise. <clears throat> and you'll also be able to see what you've been holding on to. And you'll be able to see what you've been holding on to at work or at home. These are things that have been blocking your progress. What have you been holding on to? What can you let go of to ensure smoother progress, both at home and at work? Now, we're going to have planets, the inner planets transiting Sagittarius through your fifth house. So that's Venus, Mercury and the Sun. Sun will join Venus and Mercury 17th December onwards. This is a beautiful time for love and romance. I'm so happy for you, Leo. This is good. Uh, and when the Sun steps in on the 17th December onwards, part of you might be quite work focused. So we've got nice energy for love and romance for the whole month. It's very good. But when the sun steps in 17 December onwards, it's like there's a part of you that's not so focused on that. Maybe you're worried about work, you're worried about money, expenses, maybe you're worried about your kids. That kind of thing could, could happen there. Now on the 23rd of December, there's a new moon in Sagittarius, Mula Nakshatra happening in your fifth house. So I've got the note here, wish for any root issues or problems regarding your children or relationship with your children. Wish for that to be resolved totally. And also you could wish for a stronger financial base for you and your family as well. Leo, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I'm wishing you well. I'm wishing you a really nice end to this year that you'll be able to unwind and rest. We're finishing off a very intense Saturn transit, so see if you can take some time out towards the end of the year. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Just checking the time. Wow, time is moving on. <laughs> time is just running out. All right, so now on the 7th or 8th of December, we have got a full moon in Taurus, Rohini, Nakshatra. Now we've got a retrograde Mars here as well. It's going to be quite powerful. It's going to make this full moon about two things, desire energy and what you're holding on to. Uh, now this is happening for you in your ninth house. So what are you holding on to? Let's have a look here. What you're holding on to, you could be, uh, you could be able to see what you've been holding on to. You somehow subconsciously might be holding on to um, blocks to courage and leadership. Okay, there might be something that you're doing or holding on to that's blocking courage and leadership. So you might be able to see that on this full moon, 7th, 8th of December. And there could be some desire energy regarding what you would like to learn, what you would like to study, what strings you would like to add to your bow. So that's quite interesting. Uh, now we've got a lot of planets transiting Sagittarius and that's Venus and Mercury and the Sun. So Venus and Mercury will be there all month and the sun will join them 17th December onwards. And this is happening in Sagittarius in your fourth house. So you can truly make your home very beautiful for the holiday season. Uh, you'll be feeling very creative at home. You'll be feeling very festive. And the sun will join. Now when the sun joins on 17th December onwards, the sun might just put a little dampener possibly on things. Uh, might bring some worries about high expenses, okay, um, sun dries, burns things out a little bit. So, uh, you know, that, that can happen there. <clears throat> but it's looking really nice, okay? Let's focus on Venus and Mercury. Let's focus on the fun, the yummy food, the celebrations, all that stuff. You've got a lot of that energy here. So enjoy that. 
And we've got the 23rd December, there's a new moon in Sagittarius, Mula Nakshatra, it's happening in your fourth house. So wish for any root issues or problems in your home life, or in your family life, or in your relationship with your mother to be resolved totally at this time. Virgo, I'm loving the energy here for you. I think you're gonna have a really nice end to the year. I hope you'll be able to relax and unwind. Take care. And we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon, Libra Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. All right, so on the 7th or 8th of December, we've got a full moon happening in Taurus, Rohini Nakshatra. There's a retrograde Mars here. Um, this is all happening in your 8th house. So there's going to be some strong desire energy. You'll also be able to see what you've been holding on to. And when it comes to desire, this is going to be the, what you desire regarding your love life uh, and your family, okay, extended family. You know, how would you like things to be with your extended family? How would you like things to be arranged and organized? And, you know, are you all in the same place or are you all in different places? All that kind of thing. And you'll also be able to see what you're holding on to. You'll be able to identify what blocks healthy independence, or dependence in family. So when I talk about independence and dependence in family, uh, Chuck Spezzano, the psychologist, he talks about healthy interdependence. So he wants people to, you know, because we all need family, we need people, you know, we really do. Um, but we need independence as well. We need a healthy balance between both. And it's on this 2-8 axis that we look at all the lessons around that, you know, where is it you need to be independent, where is it that you need people, all that kind of thing comes up. So you'll be having a look at that on the 7th or 8th of December with that beautiful full moon. Now in across this month we've got the inner planets transiting Sagittarius and this is happening for you in your third house. So we've got Venus and Mercury transiting your third house. We're going to have the Sun join them on the 17th of December onwards. So this is wonderful, Libra, and I've got the note here, you've got the best setup of inner planets for the festive season, okay? You can feel super creative, you can have a great time with friends, you can have social, it's wonderful and social, you'll create beautiful memories, all that, this is really, really good. I've got the note here, enjoy this period, definitely. Uh, I think you're gonna have a really lovely month ahead, actually, where you're just gonna feel yeah, all, all the good holiday vibes and feelings, it's good. Now on the 23rd of December, there's a new moon happening in Sagittarius, Mula Nakshatra in your third house. So this is a great time to wish for any root issues or problems regarding your confidence to be totally resolved at this time. So if there's some area in life where things have been challenging for you, but it, particularly when it comes to your confidence, where are you not confident? You can wish for that area within you to be totally renewed and for you to be completely confident in that area. So Libra, I'm loving this month for you. You're one of the lucky signs that's got a beautiful thing here. So thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon or Scorpio Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. All right, now on the 7th or 8th of December, we've got a full moon in Taurus Rohini Nakshatra. We've got a retrograde Mars here as well. This is all happening in your seventh house. So there are going to be two energies that are quite present. We've got desire energy that's going to be strong. You're going to see what you've been holding on to as well. So desire energy, this is seventh house. So what do you desire regarding your romantic life? You know, and this is whether you're single or with someone or whatever, you're going to discover what your true desires are regarding romance and love. Okay, you'll also be able to see what you've been holding on to. What have you been holding on to that's been blocking the love from coming into your life or that's been blocking more love from coming into your life? Coming in and equally going out, right? You know, we give. When we give love, we receive love. And the way to get the whole thing started is to give, to give love, right? So you'll be able to see what you've been holding on to that might, have, might be preventing you from giving out that love. Uh, now we've got Venus and Mercury 
they're going to be transiting Sagittarius the whole month in your second house. We're going to have the sun join them 17th December onwards. So I would say be careful of overspending during the holiday season. Uh, you could get swept away by beautiful things on display. Uh, the sun might cause spending to go higher mid-December onwards. So just take care of that. Okay. Um, and on the 23rd of December, we've got a new moon, Sagittarius, Mula Nakshatra. This is happening in your second house. So you can wish for any root issues or problems within your family or finances to be resolved once and for all. This is new moon energy. You can wish for what you want here. So and because it's second house, it is to do with family. It is to do with finances. So wish for something to be resolved to the root, the root, if there's something where you, you know, there's an issue or a problem in either your family or finances, that can be cleaned, healed, cleared from the root. So wish for that big clearing to happen. But Scorpio, I'm loving the look of uh, this month for you. It's a nice reflective sort of a month that you've got here. And we are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon, Sagittarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Just checking the time, we're okay. Good. All right, now on the 7th or 8th of December, we've got a full moon happening in Taurus, Rohini Nakshatra. We've got a retrograde Mars here as well, so it's quite powerful energy. And the two energies that are going to be quite prominent are desire energy, and you'll be able to see what you've been holding on to as well. Now this is happening for you in your sixth house. So this desire energy of yours, you can see what it is that you desire to win. You know, what, what do you want to achieve? Uh, you might discover some new things about your desires regarding career or how you would like to serve in the world or what it is that you want to contribute to the world. You might be able to see more fully your true desires in, in those areas. Now, in terms of what you've been holding on to, you might be able to see or identify blocks that have preventing you from making forward career progression. Okay, and, and these blocks, if, you, if there's something you're holding on to, if you let go, you'll have some swifter, um, more forward progression, okay, in your career, in your life, whatever it is. If there's an area where you're stuck, look at that. It might not be that you have to do some action to go forward. You might actually have to let go of something. So look out for that on the 7th or 8th of December. Now we've got a lot of planets transiting Sagittarius. Okay, this is all about you. So yes, we've got Venus, Mercury and Sagittarius all month. And we've got the Sun joining them 17th December onwards. All right, so this is all going through your first house here. This is very much about you. So you'll be feeling creative, festive. Uh, it's a great time to to work on your physical health. Yeah, this is a good time to work on health actually. Uh, when the sun appears 17th onwards, you might even be feeling tired or drained. This particularly applies to uh, Sagittarius ascendant people. Okay, so if you've got an ascendant here, your ascendant here, then yeah, this is about the physical body and you could be feeling a little bit drained from the 17th onwards. But otherwise, um, it's just good creative energy. So it's nice. Um, and what I've got is a note here, definitely relax towards the end of this month if you can. Now on the 23rd of December, there's a new moon in Sagittarius, Mula Nakshatra. This is happening in your first house. Uh, so you can wish for any root issues or problems that have been holding you back in life, in any dimension of your life. If there's anything that's been holding you back or challenging or difficult, and you sense, you know that there's something like, okay, yes, the problem is this, but the root cause is actually this, you know? It's like, well, whoa, like you, you want this whole thing to be cleared and healed. Where was I? Uh, you know, you want this whole thing to be cle cleaned and healed or cleared or healed or whatever, right? The root cause, okay? So you can wish for that at this time. Um, any one of you who say, for example, you have back pain, chronic back pain or um, headaches or any of that, uh, there's a really good book that I've been reading. It's called Healing Back Pain by Dr. Sano. I'll put the details below. You can take a look at that. And he very much goes into, um, and especially if you've got a Sagittarius Ascendant, this is a good book to read at this time because 
um, it's very much about healing something from the root and we've got this beautiful Mula Nakshatra energy here. So Sagittarius, I want to thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, I'm wishing you well, I'm wishing you a beautiful end to the year that you know you are able to unwind at the end of the year and take it easy. So thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon, Capricorn Sun, as per the Sidereal Vedic System of Astrology. All right, now what do we have here? We've got a full moon happening on the 7th or 8th of December, happening in Taurus, Rohini Nakshatra. Retrograde Mars will be there too. Uh, this is all happening in your fifth house. So we're going to have two energies present at this time. We're going to have desire energy, it's going to be quite strong. There's also going to be the potential of holding on. You might be holding on to something as well. So the desire energy, well, you'll be able to see um, quite easily your desires regarding your love life. What do you really want out of your love life? You know, and this is whether you're single or with someone, it doesn't matter. Uh, what, what do you want in, in your love life? What are your desires there? This could also be desires in connection with children as well. What do you desire for your children? Parents so often desire things for their children, you know, but also it's good to see what your children, what they desire, you know, because sometimes what we parents, I'm not a parent, but like sometimes what parents desire for their children, uh, the child doesn't want that. <laughs> so definitely uh, look at, you know, what is what do your little ones want? Um, You'll have things you want for them, but they'll have things they want for them too. It could be different. Uh, and finances. You might also look at your desire energy around your finances as well at this time, or your creativity. right? If you're an artist, this is a good time to study desire energy. On this full moon, moon you'll also be able to see what you've been holding on to. So you might be able to identify blocks uh, that are preventing love and abundance. There could be some blocks in your life and perhaps there'd been something that you've been holding on to. <clears throat> These are in our blind spots. We don't, you know, this is in the subconscious mind. We don't realize we're holding on to these things, but we are. You might be able to identify some of this stuff on this full moon. Okay. Now we've got Venus, Mercury and Sun transiting through Sagittarius. Now this is in your 12th house. Sun is going to join Venus and Mercury on the 17th December onwards. This is in your 12th house. So now this is going to be about, oh beautiful, it's going to be about escapism. This is great. So you can enjoy shopping at this time. Um, be careful of high expenses. Okay. When the sun appears from 17th onwards, you might find it hard to sleep. All right. And I know we've got Christmas coming and all that. And a lot of people get very excited at Christmas and they can't sleep because it's Christmas. Well, you might not be able to sleep because the sun is in your 12th house. So that has nothing to do with Christmas. Uh, you might think it's Christmas, but it's probably the sun in your 12th house. So um, that's what's happening there. Now on the 23rd of December, we have a new moon happening in Sagittarius Mula Nakshatra right here in the 12th house that we've been talking about. So you can wish for any root issues or problems that have been preventing your spiritual growth to be removed. Okay. Um, perhaps you want more of your inner gifts to open up or your intuition to open up more or you know um, perhaps you've had a drain of energy you know you've been losing energy to procrastination or why am I not motivated or any of that you know you can wish for the root of those things to be totally transformed and healed at this time. Capricorn I'm really liking the energy that you've got going on for this month and I'm going to wish you uh, a lovely end to the year. I hope you're going to be able to rest and unwind at the end of the year. Take care. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. And this is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon, Aquarius Sun, as per the Sidereal Vedic System of Astrology. All right, what do we have going on? Well, on the 7th or 8th of December, we've got a full moon happening in Taurus, Rohini Nakshatra. We've got a retrograde Mars there as well. This is all happening in your fourth house. So you're going to experience two energies. We've got desire energy and holding on. What are you holding on to? All right, now desire energy. You're going to discover some things about where you want to live. Okay, certain things will occur to you and you will discover some things about where you live, where you would like to live, 
all these things will be uh, up for looking at at this full moon. We've also got holding on energy here as well. So what have you been holding on to? And are there any blocks that have pre been preventing you from experiencing just comfort, ease and flow? Okay, what's been blocking you from feeling really comfortable? And this could be this could be in connection with where you live. You could be able to see what have you been holding on to. Sometimes we hold on to the place where we are, you know, and sometimes we have to let go. So some of these things will come up at this time. Now we've got a few planets, the inner planets transiting Sagittarius. We're going to have Venus, Mercury, uh, and the Sun transiting Sagittarius, and that's happening in your eleventh house. Now from the 17th of December onwards, the Sun will actually join Venus and Mercury who are already there. Oh, this is so beautiful. I'm so happy for you, Aquarius. Yeah, you've got great energy here, kind of like Libra. You're going to be able to enjoy being social, going out, having fun, connecting with friends, uh, enjoy yourself. Yeah, you've got a great set of stars here to enjoy end of year celebrations. I'm so happy for you. Now on the 23rd of December, we've got a new moon happening in Sagittarius, Mula Nakshatra in your 11th house. So you can wish for any root issues or problems in relationships with friends or older siblings to be completely cleared at this time. You can wish for healing basically in, in your friends, siblings, any of that. Wish for healing and that, that should come true. Aquarius, I'm liking the look of the energy here for you this month. Take care, take it easy towards the end of the year if you can, that would be a good idea. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're all good. Good. All right. Now this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon, Pisces Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. What do we have? Well, we've got on the 7th or 8th of December, we've got a full moon happening in Taurus, Rohini Nakshatra. We've got the Mars, you know, Mars retrograde right here with the moon. Uh, it's all going on on this full moon. And this is happening in your third house. So a couple of things I'm seeing here, a couple of energies are going to be quite pronounced. Desire energy is going to be strong because we've got Mars here. We're also holding on. You'll see what you've been holding on to, okay? Um, because Mars can also represent holding on, right? So desire energy, you're going to see how you want to expand your life uh, at this time. You're going to get ideas possibly as to how you want to expand, what, what is it you want to do, because that is, yes, third house. This is to do with your effort. This is to do with what it is that you want to create. I see what I've, yes, got here. I was just trying to figure out how is this connecting up? No, it does connect up. <laughs> third house, it is effort, yeah. How you want to expand your life going forward, absolutely. You'll also be able to see what you've been holding on to. Okay, so holding on, you might be able to identify blocks that are preventing you from creating life on your terms. What has been preventing your efforts at this time? Okay, you might be able to see that. Like if, you, if you've been really trying for things, but every time you try your attempts, your effort, it gets blocked or it just doesn't happen. You might be able to see what those things are during this full moon. We've got the inner planets transiting through Sagittarius across this month. So we're going to have Venus and Mercury there the whole month. And we're going to have Sun join them 17th December onwards. Now this is happening for you in Sagittarius in your 10th house. So this is great energy for work actually. Um, any last opportunities to make the most of Saturn and Capricorn? Yeah, you can take advantage of those now. You, 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 we're about to wrap up Saturn in Capricorn and you've got lovely energy in that regard. So um, hopefully, who knows, there might be some last minute opportunities you might be able to take advantage of. Uh, I've got the note here, take them now. Yeah, great energy for shining at work this month. Absolutely. Now on the 23rd of December, there is a new moon in Sagittarius Mula Nakshatra, 10th house. This is just what we've been talking about. So you might be able to wish for any root issues or problems uh, in your career to be cleared or healed totally at this time. 
definitely this is about career performance this is about and this is performance this is the world stage this is the place where we perform mars performs here it's exalted here saturn builds the stage the platform right so any root issue regarding your performance uh, at work or how you perform if you want something to be cleared totally you can wish for that at this time new moon energy you can always make a wish on the new moon pisces i want to thank you so much for joining and anyone who's watched the whole video thank you so much for watching this video thank you so much for all your participation on the channel as well thank you for all the likes all the shares all the comments everything i want to thank you guys so much you are just the best audience ever i should say this at the beginning i know i always forget i always forget to say this at the beginning but uh you piscean people can who are still here you can receive the love because honestly i love this work and uh, i love this community too so thank you so much for stopping by and guys i'm going to be doing some more videos i i think i mentioned to people in the introduction 23rd december to 4th january i'm going to take that time out i'm not going to do any readings but i'm going to be doing videos hopefully and this month hopefully i'm going to do some videos saturn in aquarius we're going to look at the retrograde mercury that's happening later so there are going to be hopefully i have time to do some uh, additional videos here on the channel so stay tuned see what's coming and I look forward to seeing you next time.